What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's episode, I'm going to give you a tour of the WordPress database. I'm going to go over what each of the tables are within the default installation of WordPress. I'm going to show you what happens when you install a plugin and when you delete a plugin. And then I'm going to give you a couple of SQL queries that you can run on the database to make changes on your website without being logged into your website. I'll show you two different ways to interact with the database. And by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of the WordPress database itself, how to interact with it, how to back up your files directly from the database, and why it's important to secure your web hosting account, because you'll see that anyone who has access to your actual database can make changes without being logged into your website. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to be using a local installation of WordPress on my computer. This is a theme that I'm working on. It's my premium theme. All right, so I'm going to go to my dashboard. This one is a fresh installation of WordPress. We have nothing installed here yet. We have no plugins added to this. This is just a basic installation. So the first way to interact with WordPress, the database itself, is going to be using a tool called phpMyAdmin. Now in order to get to this, you need to log into your web host, go to your control panel, identify the database section, and then launch phpMyAdmin. Make sure you're in your actual database itself. And if you just installed WordPress, then you're only going to have the 12 default tables that come with it. But if you've already had your WordPress website for some time, it's possible you already have plugins installed that added additional tables to your database itself. But these are the default ones right here. And these are the ones I'm going to go over with you today. Now, another way to interact with the database without having to use phpMyAdmin is by using a plugin. So we're going to go back to our dashboard. We're going to go to the plugin section click on add new and then over here in the search plugins we're going to type out adminer this is the one we want right here we're going to install it and then activate it once you have it active you're going to see you have another link over here in the sidebar if you click on it you'll be presented with the settings page and you can choose a different theme for the actual plugin itself you can choose the mode you want to work in which is either going to be advanced or simple if you want to have adminer stop when you log out you can check off over here and in terms of the user roles that should have access to this it should only be the administrator nobody else needs access to this plugins functionality if you make any changes save them if you need to make a connection you can click on add new connection give it a title choose your database type place your database name username and password here then you can test the connection and then you can run adminer you can choose to run it in a modal window or you can choose to run it in a new window. So that's how I'm going to run it over here just for this demonstration. Now, if we look at the adminer window over here, we see we have 13 tables now. The newest one is right here. This is the one that's created when you install and activate the adminer plugin. So if we go back to phpMyAdmin, we don't have that here yet because we have not refreshed the browser. So let's do that. And now you see we have the 13th table right here. All right, so you, you can choose which way you want to interact with the database. If you want to use phpMyAdmin, it's very easy to use. Again, you just have to log into your web host, go to your control panel, locate the database section, and then launch phpMyAdmin. Or you can just install the adminer plugin directly in your WordPress powered website. So before I do anything, I want to just make sure I emphasize the fact that you should back up your database because in this video tutorial, I'll be giving you some SQL queries that you could use in order to make changes to your website directly from the database. If you make a mistake, you want to have a backup that you can revert to. So you can do that with Adminer. You just go to your database page over here, go to export. I'm just going to have it save. You can choose the zip file, which is standard. Format's going to be SQL. Make sure all the tables are checked and then click on the export button right there and then it'll download an SQL file or a zip file of your database. Now to do that in phpMyAdmin, you click on export. We're going to choose custom. Make sure all the tables are selected. Choose your compression method. Again, you can choose zipped. I'm just going to choose none and then click on go. So that's pretty easy. That's the way you back up your database via phpMyAdmin or the adminer plugin itself. All right, so let's take a look at the tables. I'm going to make sure I go to the root of my database. Do the same thing here. So as I mentioned, these are the 12 default tables that come with WordPress. So let's go over what some of these tables do. I'm just going to go back over here to phpMyAdmin. All right, so I'm just going to bring in my website over here where I also have some code snippets there that you can copy and paste. And I also have the information on the various tables of the database there as well. Okay, so on my right hand side over here, I have my website where I have some of the terminology and the code snippets towards the bottom that we're going to be using in this tutorial. Okay, so the first table we're going to take a look at is going to be the WP 
underscores users table. Now just remember that I'm using the WP prefix over here. If you're using a different prefix for your database, then you're going to have to adjust that when we use the code snippets later on. But for this demonstration, I'm using the WP underscore prefix. All right. So in this table, the WP underscore users table, we have a couple of things that we're going to look at. We have several fields. We have the ID of the user. Now the ID for this one is one. The user login is demo. Again, this is on my local server on my computer. I'm hoping that your login credentials are going to be a lot stronger than this. Then we have the password over here. This is the hash password in the MD5 hash. Then we have the user nice name, which is demo over here. We have the user email. If there's a URL for the user, it'll be right here. The date of when they registered. The user activation if they need to reset their password. Now the user underscore status was used in WordPress multi-site to identify a spam user. And then we have the display underscore name, which over here is demo. Again, yours will be different, but these are the different fields in the WP users table. We can actually inspect the different information of each user by going to the editor it's link over here and then you're going to see the information here. Now the reason why it's so important to make sure that you secure your database and your web hosting account with good credentials is because if somebody has access to your account they can change your password right here and later on I'm going to show you how somebody can create another administrator account right on your website directly from your database. All right let's go back to the root of our database. The next table we're going to look at is the WP underscore user meta table. Now this table works with the WP underscore user table. This stores additional information related to your users. You have the U meta underscore ID, you have the user underscore ID, and you have the meta key and the meta value. What's cool about PHP my admins, you could always either browse it, you can look at the structure, you can run SQL queries and we're going to do that later on. And there's some other options over here as well. We already went over the export option over here. All right, so we're going to go back over here. And as you can see, you have all the information about the users on your website. Over here in the WP underscore capabilities, you can change a person's capability by changing this value. Okay, let's go back to the root of our database. Let's go to the WP underscore options table now. Now this is where all of your settings are going to be stored. This is where your website configuration options are going to be stored at. You have your option ID, which is a unique number. You have the option underscore name, which is a key used to identify the piece of data. Then you have the option underscore value. That's the actual piece of data itself. And then you have the auto load, if it's yes or no. This is where most of your plugins and themes are going to store their settings. So this is a very important part of your database itself. Okay, let's go back to the root. Now let's go to the post table, the WP underscore post. Now this is where all your content lives. This is where your posts, your pages, your custom post types, things of that nature. This is where it lives. You have your post ID, one, two, three, and it goes on by auto incrementing. You have the post author identified by their ID number. Then you have the date it was published over here in two formats. You have the actual post content right here. You have the post title. If there's an excerpt, you have that here. You have the status of it here, whether it's published, draft, or auto draft. You have the comment status if it's open or not. You have the ping status if it's open or not. If the post or page is password protected, you'll see that information over here. Then you have the slug for the URL over here. And then if there's any websites or URLs that need to be pinged, you'll have a list of those over here. And then you have the websites or URLs that have been pinged over here as well. Then if it's been modified, you'll have that information in these two locations here. Then this is used by plugins to cache the post. And then the post parent is what's used to create a relationship between posts. Then this is the GUID or the global unique identifier. And then you have the menu order for non post post types. Then you have the post type itself. And then you have the post mind type used for the attachments. And then if comments are on the blog post, you'll have that value over here. So that's the WP underscore post table. It's one of the most important ones. And you can always inspect the content of each post by going into it here. So let me show you how you can make changes to your website directly from the database. We're going to go over here to our local installation. I'll go to the front end. I'll click on this one. The hello world and this is the content that we see right here let me go back to my database now i'm going to insert some information over here all right so i'm putting in this string over here this sentence i'll go down all the way click on go once it loads you'll get a confirmation and what's good about php my admin is you also get the query right up here so you can always copy and paste this if you want and you can start taking down your own code snippets and if you want you could also create php code with it as well so now let's go back to that actual blog post, refresh, and now you see this is new data being inserted from the database. 
right here. So that's why it's important to secure your database because someone can just inject information directly into your website without having to log into your site. All right, let's go back to our database. Now we're gonna go over the WP underscore post meta table. This table works in conjunction with your WP underscore post table and it stores additional information about the individual posts. You have your meta ID, you have your post ID, the meta key and the meta value. Let's go back to the root of our database. We'll now go down to the comment section now this is the comment table. When you click on that, you're going to see that you have the information of every comment that's on your website. You have the comment ID, the comment post ID, the author, their email address, the author URL. If the IP has been recorded, you'll have that over here as well. You have the comment date in two formats. Then you have the actual comment itself. Then you have comment comma, which is used by plugins. And then you have the value over here if it's been approved. And then you have the comment agent, which is the browser operating system. Then you have the comment type, which is either going to be a comment or ping back or a track back. And then you have the comment parent, whether this is a reply to another comment. And then you have the user ID over here as well. Now this references the WP underscore users table. Now we're going to go to the WP underscore comment meta. We'll click on the structure over here. And this provides additional information related to the comments. You have your meta ID, the comment ID, the meta key, and the meta value. Right, let's go to our next table. We have the WP underscore terms table. Now this is where all your tags and categories are going to be located at. By default, you have the uncategorized category and you have no tags there yet. But as you create tags and categories, you'll have that information over here. You have the term ID, which is a unique number assigned to each term. You have the name of the term itself. You have the URL friendly slug. And then you have the term group. And then we're going to go to the WP underscore term taxonomy table. Now this works in conjunction with your WP underscore term table. And you have the term taxonomy ID, the term ID, taxonomy itself. So this shows you that it's a category. The description, when you give it a description, you'll give it here. And then you can have subcategories to a main category, and you'll see that here. And then the, ca the count of the categories are tags. Meaning if you have five blog posts with that category, you'll see the number displayed over here. And the same thing with tags. Let's go to our WP underscore term relationships table. Now the relationships table pretty much does what it says. It identifies the relationship between the category and tags and the post that it's associated with. You have the object ID, the term taxonomy ID, and the term order. We'll now go on to the WP underscore term meta. We'll look at the structure. Now this table came with the release of WordPress 4.4 and it allows you to save meta values for terms in a similar way to the way post metadata is saved. So you have your meta ID, your term ID, your meta key, and your meta value. All right, so now let's go back to the root of our database and we'll look at the final table, which is the WP underscore links table. We're going to look at the structure of the table itself. Now, this is an old feature that was built into WordPress and it was called the blog role. It used to exist. It basically was a way for you to manage all the links you wanted to have on your website that pointed to other websites. Now, you won't be able to find this in your WordPress dashboard, but it still exists in the database for backwards compatibility. There are some plugins that you could use that bring this back or you can create some custom code that can tap into this. All right, so you have your link ID, the link URL, the link name, link image, the target, if it's going to be blank, top, or none, the description of the link, if the link's going to be public or private, the owner of the link. You could also add ratings to the links, the date and time of when it was updated, and then the relationship of the link, any notes, and then the RSS for the link itself. Again, you won't find this in the admin section of your WordPress dashboard, but you could always bring it back by using a plugin. All right, so that covers the 12 tables that we have installed by default with WordPress. I'm going to jump back over here to the admin or plugin because I want to show you how to use this as well. And it's the same information, it's just presented in a different way. And now we're going to have some fun by using SQL within our database. Now again, you should have a backup of your database because this is code. If you make a mistake, you want to be able to revert from a backup. So the warning has been put out there. All right, so I'm going to scroll down over here on my website. And if you look over here, this is still in preview mode because I just want to edit the blog post itself, but it'll be up within a few hours. All right, so I'm going to go back to my dashboard of my local installation, and I'm going to look at the themes that are installed. All right, so I have a couple of themes over here, some themes that I'm working on. This is my premium theme. This is a developer theme that I'm creating. This is my custom theme for my website and another very fast and responsive theme I'm creating over here. All right, so now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take this code snippet right here, the first one. I'm just going to copy this. Now, one thing I want you to notice is in the option value, this is my currently active theme, Evo-Pro. And then I have the theme that I want to switch to. 
So this is an SQL command. I'm updating the WP underscore options table. I'm setting the option value. I'm replacing the option value from Evo Pro to Dev WP. So if we go back to our database, we go to the options table, we'll select data. Then we're going to scroll down to where, wherever we see the active theme. So the template and style sheet right here. All right. So now with this snippet of code right here, I'm going to change that theme. So I'll go over here to the SQL command and I'll just paste my code right there. You want to make sure the syntax is correct, but if you're getting it from my website, then you should be fine. Just make sure you change the values over here to match the theme that you currently have active to the theme that you want to have active. And you do need to have this second theme installed on your website. It won't get it from any location. It has to be on your website. We'll click on execute. If everything goes good, you'll see the query executed. Okay. Four rows affected. Then you see the actual query up here. We we'll go over here. Now we're going to refresh this. And now you see it's changed to dev WP. Now this second strip right here is just going to revert that process. Same code. I'm just swapping out the locations of the theme names themselves. I'll do this in a uh, PHP my admin. First, I'm going to refresh over here. And then to use an SQL command in PHP my admin, click on SQL over here and then paste your text. Then click on go. Go back over here. We're going to refresh. And now you see we're back to the original theme that I had active. Okay, so you remember before when I showed you how you can change content directly in the WP underscore post table by clicking on the post itself? Well, there's another way you can do that. You could just use SQL itself. So we're going to add content to the post. Now, what I want you to do is just take a moment and look at this. And I'm changing this up from command to command just to show you different ways to do it. So in this one, I'm updating the WordPress database. Now your database will be named something different. So just make sure you place the correct database name here. And then as we scroll, you're going to see the content that I'm putting in. And just remember, always use the correct table prefix. All right. So I'm going to go back over here, making sure everything's correct. Before I run that, I'm going to go back to the site, click on that. So this is the blog post itself. Click go on the SQL command. And now let me refresh. Now you see the content has changed and we added a link. Now we're going to change the link from HTTP to HTTPS. Now do that one over here. Go back to SQL command. Let me paste again. Just make sure the syntax is correct and make sure you're using the correct table prefix and putting the links that you want to change directly. Click execute. So now you see that's still HTTP, but let's refresh that. And now you see it has the S there. Now, if you want to revert that same thing, we'll go back to PHP, my admin, we're just swapping out the locations of the first command. And then click on go. It's successful. Go back over here. And now you see the S is gone. All right. So the next code snippet I'm going to show you is how to remove short codes that aren't being used on your website. You know, if you install a plugin and it gives you short code functionality, but then you delete it. Now you have all these short codes scattered all throughout your database and they're showing up on your front end. Now there's a lot of ways to deal with this and it could be some work and it could be tedious to remove them, especially if you have a lot of blog posts. Fortunately, there's a way that you can actually see what short codes exist on your website. Then you can determine which ones you're using or not, because you should know from there. So we're going to take this code right here, copy that. And now there's a couple of ways you can test this out. So if you're working on your local computer, it's safer because you're not going to impact your production website. If you're working on your production website, then you might want to create a new page template, or if you want, you could put your website into maintenance mode temporarily, and you could put this into your header or your footer.php file. So I'm going to just show you how to do that over here. We'll go to the dashboard. We're going to go to appearance and then editor. And then we're going to go over here to the theme footer area. Now over here above the closing body tag, but inside of the closing PHP tag, I'm going to put in that code. Let me give it some space. So basically this is going to get a list of all the short codes on your website. Want to make sure the syntax is correct. Want to make sure that you're inside the PHP open and closing tags. Once you have that all set up properly, update the file. Let's go to the front of our website. And now towards the bottom, you're going to see what short codes we have. Now we don't have anything over here, but let's put in a plugin. We're going to go over here, add new. I'm just going to type out contact form seven. It's a very popular plugin for contact forms. We'll install it. We'll activate it. Then we're going to go to settings and then we're going to grab this short code right here. We're going to go to all posts. I'm just going to put it underneath the content here. So we're putting in that short code. 
We're going to update it. Let's view the post. And now we see we have the contact form there. Really easy. It's a great plugin. I did a video tutorial on how to set it up and how to use it. Check it out. But let's say all of a sudden you want to use a different contact form plugin and you've been using this one for a significant amount of time. Now you have all these short codes scattered all over the place. And let's say you go and you deactivate and delete the plugin itself. So we're going to install plugins. We'll deactivate it. Then we'll delete it. Click OK. We'll go back over here to the front of our site. Go back here. And now you see you have the short code there. Now imagine that being there countless times. You don't want to sit there and go manually and start deleting all of these short codes. So I'm going to show you how you can delete it from the database in bulk. Now this is going to be using SQL and you're going to have to format this differently based on the short codes, but I'll give you the general idea. So we're going to go over here to my website again. I'm going to grab this snippet of code. I'm going to go right here, go to the database, the root of it, SQL command. Now I'm going to paste it. Now again, you want to make sure you have the table prefix correct, but then you're also going to want to make sure you have all this other information correct as well. So we'll go over here. We see the contact form 7 ID equals quotation mark 4. So that's the idea for the title contact form 1. So we'll go back over here. We're going to have to change this over here to a 4 in contact form 1. All right, so now if you look at the website, you see that we don't have those forward slashes there in front of the quotation marks. But in our SQL command, we have it there because we have to escape it. Otherwise, it won't work. So we have the forward slash in front of the first quotation mark. And then we have another one in front of the other one. And then over here as well. And over here as well. So we're updating the WP underscore post table. We're setting the post content, replacing the post content. We're searching for this short code over here. And we're replacing it with an empty string over here. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure you're using the correct information. Click on execute and it says two rows have been affected. We'll go back over here. We'll refresh and now we see the short code is gone. It's as simple as that. You're just going to have to play around with the short code format itself. It could just be the forward bracket, one word and then a closing bracket or it could be multiple words and some items might have to be escaped. But ultimately this is what it will look like. All right, so now let's say we want to deactivate all plugins. Let's say there's something going on. We want to debug our website and we just want to deactivate all plugins you know, very quickly. Or let's say we're going to convert our website to a multi-site setup and we just want to quickly deactivate all the plugins. We could do that as well. We could copy this snippet of code. We're going to go back over here, go to SQL. Let me go back to our website real quick. And now we only have one plugin installed. Let's add another one over here. I want to type out WP Sweep. It's another very good plugin. We'll install it and we'll activate it. So now we're going to go over here. Let's refresh this over here. And now I'm going to paste in this snippet of code right here. What we're doing is we're updating the options table. We're setting the new option value where the option name is active plugins. Make sure your syntax is correct. Click on go. One row affected. Let's go back over here. Refresh. Now those are no longer active. That also means that this also doesn't work over here. So we'll just X out of this one for now. Now the next snippet of code I'm going to give you is to insert an admin account onto your website via the database. Now this is very powerful and this is why I said you have to really protect your website information because you don't want somebody being able to access your database and doing this. So I'm going to go back to my database. I'm going to go to SQL. I'm going to paste in the information. So pretty much what this is doing is we're inserting into the WordPress database. Again, make sure that you're putting, you're changing this value over here, over here, and over here to the name of your database into the WP users table and the WP user meta table. And over here as well, we're going through the individual items over here, the ID, the user login, user password, user nice name, user email, all that information. And then we're providing the values of two for the ID demo two for the login. This is going to be the password and it'll be hashed. The user nice name, demo email, the URL for them, the date registered, the user status over here, and then user activation key is just empty. Then we have the display name right here. Then over here we're doing into the WP underscore user meta, we're going into these fields and providing these values and the same thing over here. So make sure everything looks good. Make sure you change the values for the prefixes and the database. Click on go. One row affected. We're going to go to our WP underscore users table. And now we see we have two users there. Before we only had one. And now we just inserted another user into our website without having to log into our website. And then if somebody wants to get sneaky, there's a lot of things they could do. They can actually hide this over here. So you may not even see this in your dashboard. So again, you got to be very careful with your database credentials, your web host credentials, and your website. Now, if we could also just create another user here. We could just click on the insert button and we could start filling out the information here. 
and then do the same thing in the WP underscore user meta table. Click on insert and start putting in the information here. It'll be similar values to what's over here in the code. Let me walk you through that entire process real quick. Go over here to the WP users table. We're going to click on insert. We're going to choose an ID. Let's choose a three for this one. Got to make sure it's available. We'll type out demo three. We'll put in a password. We're going to hash it, the MD5. Use a nice name, use your email. If you want to put a URL, you can. You can put the date registered. We can say registered the other day. You can leave that blank if you want. This is set to zero. Then display name will just say demo account. Then we'll click the go button over here. You see the query right there. Now we're going to go to the user meta table. We're going to insert over here. We're going to leave this one blank right here. And then we'll put in the user ID that we used before, which was three. We want to make sure they match. And then over here, we're going to put in WP underscore capabilities. And then for the value, we're going to take this snippet right here. Just copy it. We're going to paste it right here. Make sure it looks correct. And then we'll scroll down over here. We're going to leave this first one blank over here. And then we'll put in the user ID again. And then for the meta key, we're going to use WP underscore user underscore level. And then for the meta value, we're going to put in 10. Then we're going to click on the go button over here. Before we do that, let's go back here. We see we don't have that person yet. Click on go. If we did everything correct, we'll see that it's been inserted. And this is the SQL query right there. Now we'll go back to our dashboard. We're going to refresh. And now you see I have the third one there as well. Go back to our database. Go back to the user table. Now you see we have three. We have the other one there. All right, so that's how you can insert another admin account to the website itself. Again, the database is very powerful and you need to protect this as much as you can. Use very strong user credentials. Make sure they're unique and change them out every so often. And if you can, use two-factor authentication. I actually created my own password generator just for this task. So let me show you that real quick. So I created my own password generator just for myself. And what I could do is I could put any length that I want. So if I want 50 characters, I could choose the formatting of it. Submit. Now this is my password right there. I can submit it again. It creates a new one. It's randomly generated. It lives on my computer and it's highly secure. Now there's a bunch of services you could use. I like using password managers as well. And some of them have the password generator functionality. Definitely check it out. And if you could use that, use it. But in this video, I just wanted to give you an overview of the database itself. These are the default tables. Get familiar with them. Make a backup of your database. You can install it on your local computer. And you can really see how powerful working with the database really is. Now, one last thing before I let you go, I want to show you what happens over here when we install a plugin. I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to add in the WooCommerce. We're going to install it. We're going to activate it. We're going to just click out of this now. We're going to go back to our database. We're going to refresh it. Now we see we have a lot more tables created. All right, so let's say you're using this for a while and then you figure it could be this plugin or it could be any other plugin that creates tables. Now let's say you decide later on, after some time, that you're going to change your plugin to handle this type of functionality. So let's say you go back to the dashboard, you go to the uh, plugins installed, we're going to deactivate, and now we're going to delete the plugin. Click OK. It'll delete it. But now if we go back to our database, the tables are there. Let's refresh in the browser. The tables are still there, even though we deleted the plugin from our installation. Now, why is that? It's common for plugins not to really clean up after themselves. So your database is going to get full of these tables and this data, things of that nature. Like anything, the bigger it gets, the more it impacts your performance of your website. So if you want to keep your database clean, you want to optimize your database. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do that. Let's say we go back to our website. Let's activate the WP Sweep. And just to be fair, I'm going to put in another optimization plugin. Add new over here. This one right here. We're going to activate it. And so let me make this window bigger real quick. So now we have two database optimization plugins. So WP Sweep will be found in the Tools section. And WP Optimize has its own section over here. So let's first try the WP Sweep. Let's go back all the way to the bottom. Let's sweep that. Now, it does say you should back up your database before making any changes, but I'm on my local computer, so this is fine. All right, so it's been swept. Let's refresh. And the tables are still there. Now, the plugin does its job, but it doesn't remove tables. It just optimizes other aspects of your database. All right, so let's try the other plugin. Let's go over here. Let's check off some of these features. Okay, it gives you a warning over here. And of course, it's asking you to, to back up your database. You can look at more table information here. Shows you what's there. You can configure some stuff over here as well. Let's go back over here. 
We're going to run the selected optimizations, and it's done. All right, so now let's go back to our database itself, and refresh, and you still have the tables there. So that plugin didn't do it either. We'll go back over here to the table information, and you still see them there. So again, this one does its job also, but it doesn't remove the tables. So one thing you could do, you can go over here to your database. You can start selecting the database tables. You could drop them. If you know the tables that you want to remove, this is something you can do. Or you can just select them all. Make sure you only have the ones that you want to drop selected. Then you click on drop right there. Now for this particular plugin, they actually have code that you can put into your wp-config.php file and that will take care of this for you. So I'm going to drag that over here. So right here, this line right here, we're going to save it. We're defining the constant and then we're putting the parentheses and then in single quotation marks, we have the in capital letters, wc underscore remove underscore all underscore data, comma separated. Make sure you have your closing quotation mark, setting that to true, closing the parentheses and then finalizing with a semicolon. Now this is going in your wp-config.php file. So I'm going to save this over here. Now the thing is with this, you still need to have the plugin installed. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go to installed. It's not there, so I'm going to have to add it again. Then install now. Activate it. We'll go back to our database, make sure everything looks the same. You see we still have 27 tables. Now we're going to go back here. We're going to deactivate and delete it. Now because we placed that code in there, when we go back to our database, we're going to refresh. Now you see almost all the tables are gone. You still have this one table over here, the log table. You can just drop that if you want, click on it. And you can drop it from here, or you could just drop it from here. And now it's gone. Another thing you could do is you can check all of your tables, and you could optimize them from here. You can check them all again if you want. If you're facing any issues, you can check the table, you can repair the table, you can analyze the table. These are some of the options you have with phpMyAdmin. All right, so I just wanted to give you a tour of the WordPress database, some of the default tables that come with it, and what happens when you install plugins and when you uninstall plugins, how you can clean up your database, and why it's important to protect your database, because with the SQL queries that I showed you, you could do a lot of good management of your website, but if somebody gets unauthorized access to your database, then they could do something serious there, and you may not even realize it. Let's say you have an older blog post that you haven't even reviewed in a long time, Somebody can insert a link to their website or to another website directly within that older post, and you won't even know. They can insert another admin user, then they could hide the admin from your dashboard. There's a lot of things that they can do. So you want to make sure you protect the database as much as possible. We covered the 12 basic tables, and now you know a little bit more about how the WordPress database works. I'm going to do another video for the WordPress multi-site database because it's a little bit different. It adds a couple of more tables to the database and it adds another user role, the super admin. So definitely subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be coming out with that video shortly. If you want to support this channel, check out my Patreon page. And if you're in the market for a brand new theme, check out Evo Pro. You can go to my website, which is pixelweb.com. And this is a demo of it right here. It's a fully responsive SEO ready premium theme. Comes with a lot of features that you need, very customizable. You can choose the different types of layouts that it has. For the blog area, you could choose for it to have a sidebar. You can choose for it to be a full width. You can even have a masonry style layout. I'm going to do a more in-depth tutorial on this premium theme itself. So definitely check it out. But if you want to support the channel, head over to Patreon or go to my website and make a purchase for Evo Pro. I'll leave links in the description to everything. And this is the actual link right here to the location on my website where you can check out the premium WordPress themes I work with. So I have my custom theme over here, and you can check out a live demo, you can buy it now, and you can check out the third-party solutions that I work with. I have the developer licenses for the Genesis framework and for the Equity framework. This has a bunch of different child themes that can fit pretty much any type of website, and the Equity framework is specifically for real estate. So definitely check that out if you're looking for a real estate type website, or if you're looking for any other type of website. Check them out on PixelWeb and then get in touch with me. I also install premium plugins as well, like Soliloquy, the Envira Gallery, Gravity Forms, Backup Buddy, iTheme Security Pro, and others. And you get all the updates right within the dashboard of your website. So again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll be giving you more 
tips and tricks on how to manage your website, how to secure your website, how to optimize your website for increased performance, and generally how to take your website to the next level. All right, hopefully you found it helpful. Thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.